How's it going everybody? My name is Chris. I'm a physical therapist and registered nurse. This video is going to focus on why probiotics don't always work for their intended purpose that you've set for them and some troubleshooting that you can do to see if you can get them to serve their intended purpose. So maybe you've tried a variety of probiotics, whether it's in a pill form of some kind. Maybe you've had some kimchi. Maybe you've drank some kimchi juice. Maybe you've had some beet kvass. See, there's a whole different variety of ways that you can get probiotics. Of course, everybody knows about yogurt and things like that. They're starting to infuse probiotics into all kinds of different products. So maybe you set out a purpose to take a probiotic, whatever gut problem it was, or whatever ailment, and you didn't notice much of a difference, right? So you took this probiotic for a while and you said, this isn't really doing anything for me. I've heard a lot of people say that because you know, being a physical therapist, people talk about these kind of things too and they come in the office. But the thing is, is that maybe it wasn't the right one for you. It raises a lot of questions. You hear about lactobacillus, acidophilus, and that's just become almost like a common household name in, in the world of probiotics. But the microbiome or the collection of all the different microorganisms in your gut isn't so simple. It's, it's a messy thing and of course anything related to small bacteria and yeast and, and all different types of viruses, all those things, it's messy. And I think it's hard to say, well if you take 50 billion CFUs, colony forming units, of lactobacillus acidophilus strain DL whatever, right? You're gonna be better. I don't think that's the case and I don't think that we can reduce everybody into a single formula. Kind of like we try to do with a lot of Western medicine. Sometimes that's appropriate, don't get me wrong. There are certainly times where that kind of approach is appropriate. And hopefully when you try a probiotic, it does exactly what you want it to. But if it doesn't, I'd encourage you to keep looking. That's why I think it's important to look at natural sources of probiotics if a particular probiotic isn't working for you in a pill form. So like I said, there are a lot of things like beet kvass unpasteurized kimchi. This is just an example. Unpasteurized sauerkraut. These are, these are different forms of probiotics. Kimchi juice. I have a variety of different ways that I'm getting probiotics into my diet. So I'm covering a broad spectrum. Not just thinking about the pure numbers of probiotics, but I'm thinking about how can I get a diversity of microorganisms into my gut. Another reason that probiotics don't seem to do what they're meant to do for people is they're transient. Most of the research is showing that they may have a positive effect as they're going through you, but commercial probiotics in general, in a pill form, don't have spores to implant in the gut wall. So we don't have a way to make them permanent as of now. So Getting natural forms of probiotics in your diet is a great way to make that more permanent. I absolutely think you can have influences on your microbiome by taking in probiotics and then nurturing them with things like natural prebiotics from fiber. So the more whole foods that you're eating and the less highly processed foods that you're eating, lots of oils, lots of fried foods, those kind of things are going to promote the types of bacteria and other organisms that you don't really want. Whereas if you're eating whole foods, it will feed some of these bacteria that would be more beneficial to your health. So diet plays a large role in the success of probiotics in the long term and your microbiome. Supplements in general are poorly regulated and poorly controlled. So you want to find a reputable company that sells a product that you know is good. Now there's different ways that you can assess these kind of things. One of the ways that I look at the quality of products is do they have GMP status? Good manufacturing practices. Now that doesn't always ensure that they're doing exactly what they should in terms of quality, but it's a step in the right direction, right? Another way you can look at it is how many fillers are in there? Do they have silica? Do they have magnesium stearate? 
do they have a variety of different fillers in the product itself. Usually that means it's being made for the masses and it might not be as quality of a product. I'm not saying that's always true, but there's, there's good evidence a lot of times you can see in some of the bigger distributors that that's the case. Look for things that require refrigeration, right? So if things say they're shelf stable, I would be a little skeptical. I, in my experience, I've never been pleased with a probiotic that is allowed to just stay on the shelf for a long period of time because these are live microorganisms. Maybe the product that you receive wasn't shipped correctly, it sat in a warehouse, it got hot, it killed off all the microorganisms that were inside the probiotic. So these are things to consider. Don't get frustrated if something doesn't work right away. Keep trying different combinations of products and see what works for you. See if you can get more natural probiotics in your diet as well. I hope this was helpful guys. My mission with this channel is to help people get more tools in their toolbox so they can thrive with any health circumstance. If those are the kind of videos that you like, go ahead and subscribe and comment below on the types of things that would be helpful to help you thrive in your own life. Thanks a lot and hope to see you soon.